This video is to talk about malabsorption in children. Okay, so malabsorption in children from the name it is mal poor and absorption is absorption the of uh, nutrients uh, from the GI tract. So it's a clinical term that points okay to defects occurring okay, what uh, during the digestion and absorption of a nutrient by the GI tract okay so this is definition it's poor digestion and absorption of nutrient by the GI tract it's important to know that malabsorption is almost always associated with the chronic diarrhea okay abdominal distension and failure to thrive most of the times uh, I'm going to t tell you why in a few minutes okay before we start in malabsorption we have to know the physiology of nutrient digestion and absorption before the uh, to, before you know the abnormal thing you have to know the normal physiology of absorption okay so absorption usually happens in three phases the first one is luminal okay phase and the second one is mucosal phase and third one is venous and lymphatic transport so the goal behind absorption and digestion is to make the food uh, able uh, okay to be used by the cells of the body okay so what the lumen of the intestine and the mucous cells and the venous lymphatic do is to make the food in the form that the body can get benefit from okay so this these are the three phases where that happens in the lumen of the intestine and the mucous cells and the venous and lymphatic transport that transport the end result of luminal and mucosal digestion and absorption okay most nutrients digestion and absorption occur in the proximal uh, small intestine in the proximal small intestine so most of digestion and absorption is the proximal uh, small intestine p12 and the bile acids are especially as abs absorbed in the terminal ileum so remember that most of digestion and absorption is in the small intestine but that doesn't mean that uh, the small intestine is the only side to have absorption digestion no also p12 and bile acids and other things are absorbed in the terminal ileum okay so when we talk about absorption we mainly talk about three components okay about the carbohydrate about the lipid and the protein let's start with the carbohydrate absorption and digestion okay so we eat carbohydrate that is in food the starch okay is a form of carbohydrate is digested by amylase so this is the first thing to happen the starch is digested by amylase what is the result of that the result of that to, uh, is to have glucose polymers glucose polymers glucose polymers is the maltose maltose okay so we have dietary carbohydrates okay in the shape of polysaccharide polysaccharide is the starch okay or disaccharide or monosaccharide monosaccharide uh, uh, have uh, uh, okay you don't need to digest monosaccharide okay disaccharide and polysaccharide need to be digested and the amylase as you see the salivary one also play, play a role in uh, breaking down the polysaccharide into a smaller chip and the pancreatic amylase also play that role so the end result is maltose maltose okay maltose in the small intestine is breaking down broken down by the maltase okay maltase and the result is glucose 
glucose so you have to know that uh, the polysaccharides like maltose uh, have multiple glucose in it okay it is the result of a glucose plus a glucose okay other carbohydrates like sucre sucrose okay is the result of fructose fructose plus uh, a glucose a glucose uh, okay and the lactose the third one lactose is the result of galactose ga la toes plus glucose so all of them have glucose okay but the maltose is glucose plus glucose the sucrose is fructose plus glucose the lactose is galactose so lg remember always lg lactose is with galactose sucrose is with fructose okay so the presence of some enzymes in the intestine play important role to break down these large uh, poly or disaccharides disaccharides i'm sorry th these are disaccharides not polysaccharides okay disaccharides uh, into monosaccharides which is a glucose fructose and galactose so the maltose enzyme is maltase okay maltase break down the maltose into glucose the sucrose enzyme is sucrase okay and the sucrase break down the sucrose into fructose plus glucose okay the lactose enzyme is lactase lactase and the lactase plays plays a role in uh, breaking down the lactose into galactose okay and glucose so these are the primary or the monosaccharides from the disaccharides okay the, so if we have a problem in suc sucrase for example if we have deficiency in lactase or a deficiency in maltase so the maltose will not be broken down okay sucrose also or the lactose and that will lead to a problem in absorption that material because intestines uh, is unable to absorb uh, these materials as disaccharide okay so you have to break it down also if we have a problem of amylase for example so the polysaccharides or the starch will not be able to broken down or to break down into maltose okay the disaccharide form so we have malabsorption okay i'm going into that in a minute so this is how uh, the uh, sugar or the carbohydrate okay are absorbed now let's move to the second thing the lipid digestion and absorption very important the lipid or the fat okay first in the small intestine we have the lipase enzyme okay the lipase enzyme uh, is secreted by pancreas okay what is the the benefit of lipase enzyme is to break down the triglycerides into mono glycerides and the fatty acid so what really happens that we have a fatty acid okay this is a fatty acid that binds three monoglyceride together so we have a triglyceride and a fatty acid okay this shape of lipid uh, is not to be absorbed the intestine is unable to absorb so what lipase do is that breaks down this thing into one mono monoglyceride okay or glycerin and fatty acid now this shape is still unable to be absorbed okay it have because it is uh, water insoluble so to make it water insoluble and to make it get it through the intestine membrane the bile acid should emulsify the dietary file sorry the dietary fat 
into what we call micelles okay so the bile acid that are secreted from the uh, uh, liver and stored in the gallbladder will go into the small intestine and emulsify that dietary fat okay into micelles the micelles is some shape of dietary fat okay here we have monoglyceride and uh, fatty acids okay and so that it can pass the intestine mucosa into the cells of the intestine so to absorb the fat we have to have lipase enzyme to break down the lipid into a simpler shape okay and we have to have a bile acid to emulsify that dietary fat into my cells that can be absorbed by the intestine okay then long fatty acids absorbed and packed as chylomicrons and into in, into the enterocytes so this third stage after breaking down the triglyceride into monoglyceride and after the micelles in uh, uh, into uh, in the cells okay of the intestine we have some proteins that pack the uh, long fatty acids okay uh, together to form what we call chylomicron the chylomicrons uh, are the shape of the lipids that can get into the lymphatics okay and the blood after the chylomicrons form then go to lymphatics then to liver to then to blood lipid digestion occurs primarily in the small intestine enzymes from the pancreas and the small intestine remove fatty acids from triglycerides the small molecules of glycerol and short and medium chain fatty acids are easily absorbed into the intestinal cells and then released into the bloodstream. Larger molecules of fat merge into tiny spherical complexes known as micelles, which enter the intestinal cell for absorption. There, these lipids are packaged with proteins, forming transport vehicles known as chylomicrons. These chylomicrons are released into the lymph system before entering the bloodstream. So this is the lipid absorption digestion. What about the third important component, the protein absorption? In the stomach, okay, we have the pepsin. And the pepsin enzyme breaks up the proteins into polypeptide. So the digestion of proteins starts from the stomach. So we have the protein okay in the stomach we have pepsin p okay and the pepsin breaks down the poly polypeptide so uh, or the protein into uh, polypeptide okay so it breaks down the protein into the polypeptide okay uh, in the small intestine this this is in the stomach okay in the small intestine these polypeptides are further broken down by proteases this time proteases are enzymes that break down the proteins polypeptides okay into a smaller shape the peptides okay what are the protease, proteases they are secreted from pancreas like trypsin the chemotrypsin are very important okay so now we have a small peptides of no longer than three amino acids so the uh, okay the largest number uh, that is permitted to be in uh, to be absorbed is three amino acids so we start with a protein the protein is broken down the stomach into multiple polypeptides and in the intestine the polypeptides are broken down into simple peptides by what by the enzyme uh, the pancreatic enzymes like trypsin chymotrypsin okay peptides of no longer than uh, three peptides then in the enterocytes or in the cells of the intestine okay in the cells of the intestine or the enterocytes we have a, a, a by cytoplasmic peptides those peptides are broken down into the simplest shape of the protein into the amino acids 
that absorbed into the uh, blood so the shape of protein that uh, absorbed into the blood is the amino acid okay so again protein uh, 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 pepsin in the stomach make it polypeptides chymotrypsin and trypsin in the uh, small intestine make it peptides okay once it's there in, into the enterocytes we have uh, other enzymes that break down the amino acid uh, or the peptides into uh, amino acids okay so the peptide is uh, enzymes do that so this is the normal physiology of absorption of carbohydrate don't forget the lipid and the protein remember them all now let's start with the malabsorption syndrome if we have a problem in these mechanisms of absorption what are the signs of and symptoms of malabsorption actually we have uh, two categories of signs and symptoms we have signs and symptoms that is related to the presence of stool in the or the contents of the intestine without being absorbed normally the contents of the intestine must be absorbed and the rest of it will be the stool okay if we have no absorption so in the intestine we will have still have fat contents maybe carbohydrate and proteins and the presence of these materials in the stool will make some problems like what like chronic diarrhea uh, and in the cases of fat malabsorption for example we have what we call stachyurea okay a stool with fat fatty stool chronic diarrhea is diarrhea of more than 14 hours what also the presence of stool in the stomach and the intestine will make abdominal distension abdominal distension okay and also abdominal pain abdominal pain anything pathological will lead to abnormal symptoms okay so this is the first category of symptoms the second category of symptoms is due to the reduction of the uh, objects or the material that the body should absorb and get benefit of f uh, of okay so we will have failure to thrive because the patient is not absorbing the proteins anymore or the carbohydrate or the fat or all of them okay we have paleness edema and ascites why to have edema because the proteins are not absorbed so the osmolarity of blood will be decreased we will have less oncotic pressure the uh, water will move from blood into the interstitial fluid due to lack of protein and other things okay we ha will have also signs of rickett rickett is a disease of vitamin d deficiency or, uh, have hypocalcemia and other things okay so we will see signs of rickett due to vitamin d deficiency okay we, we may have vitamin k deficiency so we, we may see signs of bleeding or, and so on okay vitamin k deficiency and other vitamins you may have skin lesions dermatitis and so many symptoms may be seen okay but these are the most important we may have associated symptoms of aftals ulcer for example recurrent infection due to protein loss decrease in immunity okay we may have skin manifestations okay so this is signs and these are the signs and symptoms of malabsorption what about the practical approach how to the, to approach to patient with malabsorption we have to take good history and then physical examination after that investigations okay so i think i am out of time so in the next video i'm going to talk about the practical approach to malabsorption thank you very much for watching this video